An inflorescence is a group or cluster of flowers arranged on a stem that is composed of a main branch or a complicated arrangement of branches. Morphologically, it is the part of the shoot of seed plants where flowers are formed and which is accordingly modified. The modifications can involve the length and the nature of the internodes and the phyllotaxis, as well as variations in the proportions, compressions, swellings, adnations, conations and reduction of main and secondary axes. Inflorescence can also be defined as the reproductive portion of a plant that bears a cluster of flowers in a specific pattern. The stem holding the whole inflorescence is called the peduncle and the major axis holding the flowers or more branches within the inflorescence is called the rachis. The stalk of each single flower is called the pedicel. A flower that is not part of an inflorescence is called a solitary flower, and its stalk is also referred to as a peduncle. Any flower in an inflorescence may be referred to as a floret, especially when the individual flowers are particularly small and born in a tight cluster, such as in a pseudanthium. The fruiting stage of an inflorescence is known as an infructor. Essence. Inflorescences may be simple or complex. The rachis may be one of several types, including single, composite, umbel, spike, or race me. General characteristics. Inflorescences are described by many different characteristics including how the flowers are arranged on the peduncle, the blooming order of the flowers and how different clusters of flowers are grouped within it. These terms are general representations as plants in nature can have a combination of types. Bracts inflorescences usually have modified shoots foliage different from the vegetative part of the plant. Considering the broadest meaning of the term any leaf associated with an inflorescence is called the bract. A bract is usually located at the node where the main stem of the inflorescence forms, joined to the main stem of the plant. But other bracts can exist within the inflorescence itself. They serve a variety of functions which include attracting pollinators and protecting young flowers. According to the presence or absence of bracts and their characteristics we can distinguish abracteate inflorescences. No bracts in the inflorescence. Bracteate and fluorescences. The bracts in the inflorescence are very specialized, sometimes reduced to small scales, divided or dissected. Leafy inflorescences. Though often reduced in size, the bracts are unspecialized and look like the typical leaves of the plant, so that the term flowering stem is usually applied instead of inflorescence. This use is not technically correct, as despite their normal appearance, these leaves are considered, in fact, bracts, so that leafy inflorescence is preferable. Leafy bracted inflorescences, intermediate between bracteate and leafy inflorescence. Dot. If many bracts are present and they are strictly connected to the stem, like in the family Asteraceae, the bracts might collectively be called an involucre. If the inflorescence has a second unit of bracts further up the stem, they might be called an involucel. Dot 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 dot. Terminal flower. Plant organs can grow according to two different schemes, namely monopodial erasmus and sympodial acymos. In inflorescences these two different growth patterns are called indeterminate and determinate respectively, and indicate whether a terminal flower is formed and where flowering starts within the inflorescence. Indeterminate inflorescence. Monopodial growth. The terminal bud keeps growing and forming lateral flowers. A terminal flower is never formed. Determinate inflorescence. Sympodial growth. The terminal bud forms a terminal flower and then dies out. Other flowers then grow from lateral buds. Dot. 
Indeterminate and determinate inflorescences are sometimes referred to as open and closed inflorescences respectively. In an indeterminate inflorescence there is no true terminal flower and the stem usually has a rudimentary end. In many cases the last true flower formed by the terminal bud straightens up, appearing to be a terminal flower. Often a vestige of the terminal bud may be noticed higher on the stem. Dot, dot, dot. In determinate inflorescences the terminal flower is usually the first to mature, while the others tend to mature starting from the bottom of the stem. This pattern is called acropetal maturation. When flowers start to mature from the top of the stem, maturation is precipital, while when the central mature first divergent, Philotaxis. As with leaves, flowers can be arranged on the stem according to many different patterns. See Philotaxis for in-depth descriptions. Metatopy. Metatopy is the placement of organs out of the normally expected position. Typically metatopy occurs in inflorescences when unequal growth rates alter different areas of the axis and the organs attached to the axis. When a single or a cluster of flower is located at the axil of a bract, the location of the bract in relation to the stem holding the flower is indicated by the use of different terms and may be a useful diagnostic. Indicator. Typical placement of bracts include. Some plants have bracts that subtend the inflorescence. Where the flowers are on branched stalks, the bracts are not connected to the stalks holding the flowers, but are adnit or attached to the main stem. Other plants have the bracts subtend the pedicellar peduncle of single flowers. Dot. Metatopic placement of bracts include, when the bract is attached to the stem holding the flower, it is said to be recoalescent. Sometimes these bracts of bracteales are highly modified and appear to be appendages of the flower calyx. Recoalescences is the fusion of the subtending leaf with the stem holding the bud of the bud itself. Thus the leaf of bract is adnit to the stem of flower. When the formation of the bud is shifted up the stem distinctly above the subtending leaf, it is described as concorlescent. Dot, 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 dot. Organization. There is no general consensus in defining the different inflorescences. The following is based on Focke Weberling's morphology der Blüten und der Blütenstand. The main groups of inflorescences are distinguished by branching. Within these groups, the most important characteristics are the intersection of the axes and different variations of the model. They may contain many flowers or a few. Inflorescences can be simple or compound. Simple inflorescences indeterminate race mos. Indeterminate simple inflorescences are generally called race mos, race mos. The main kind of race mos inflorescence is the race me. The other kind of race mos inflorescences can all be derived from this one by dilation, compression, swelling or reduction of the different axes. Some passage forms between the obvious ones are commonly admitted. A race me is an unbranched, indeterminate inflorescence with pedicellate flowers along the axis. A spike is a type of race me with flowers that do not have a pedicel. A race mos corymb is an unbranched, indeterminate inflorescence that is flat top to convex due to their outer pedicels which are progressively longer than inner ones. An umbel is a type of race me with a short axis and multiple floral pedicels of equal length that appear to arise from a common point. A spadix is a spike of flowers densely arranged around it, enclosed or accompanied by a highly specialized bract called a spathe. It is characteristic of the Araceae family. A flowerhead acupitulum is a very contracted race me in which the single sessile flowers share a born on an enlarged stem. It is characteristic of Dipsacaceae. A catkin or amant is a scaly, generally drooping spike or race me. Cymas or other complex and fluorescences that are superficially similar are also generally called thus. Dot 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 dot. 
determinant of cymos determinant simple inflorescences are generally called cymos. The main kind of cymos inflorescence is the cyme. Cymes are further divided according to this scheme. Only one secondary axis, monochasium secondary buds always develop on the same side of the stem. Helicoid cyme abostrix the successive pedicels are aligned on the same plane. Drepanium secondary buds develop alternately on the stem. Scorpioid cyme the successive pedicels are arranged in a sort of spiral. Cincinnus the successive pedicels follow a zigzag path on the same plane. Ripidium, two secondary axes. Dicasial cyme secondary axis still dicasial. Dicasium secondary axis monochasia. Double scorpioid cyme a double helicoid cyme. More than two secondary axes. Pliochasium. Dot 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 dot. A cyme can also be so compressed that it looks like an umbel. Strictly speaking this kind of inflorescence could be called umbelifum cyme, although it is normally called simply umbel. Another kind of definite simple inflorescence is the raceme like cyme abotrioid, that is as a raceme with a terminal flower and is usually improperly called raceme. Dot 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 dot. A reduced racemiocyme that grows in the axle of a bract is called a fascicle. A verticillaster is a fascicle with the structure of a dicasium. It is common among the Lamiaceae. Many verticillasters with reduced bracts can form a spicate inflorescence that is commonly called a spike. Dot dot dot. Compound inflorescences. Simple inflorescences are the basis for compound inflorescences as inflorescences. The single flowers are the replaced by a simple inflorescence, which can be both a racemos or a cymos. One compound inflorescences are composed of branched stems and can involve complicated arrangements that are difficult to trace back to the main branch. A kind of compound inflorescence is the double inflorescence, in which the basic structure is repeated in the place of single florets. For example a double raceme is a raceme in which the single flowers are replaced by other simple racemes. The same structure can be repeated to form triple or more complex structures. Compound raceme inflorescences can either end with a final raceme, or not. A compound raceme is often called a panicle. Note that this definition is very different from that given by Weberling. Compound umbels are umbels in which the single flowers are replaced by many smaller umbels called umbelase. The stem attaching the side umbelase to the main stem is called a ray. Dot 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 dot. The most common kind of definite compound inflorescence is the panicle. A panicle is a definite inflorescence that is increasingly more strongly and irregularly branched from the top to the bottom and where each branching has a terminal flower. The so-called cymos corumb is similar to a racemos corumb but has a panicle-like structure. Another type of panicle is the anthella. An anthella is a cymos corumb with the lateral flowers higher than the central ones. A raceme in which the single flowers are replaced by cymes is called a thyrosi. The secondary cymes can of course be of any of the different types of dicasia and monochasia. A botryoid in which the single flowers are replaced by cymes is a definite thyrosi thyrosoid. Thyroses are often confusingly called panicles. Other combinations are, of course, possible. For example, heads or umbels may be arranged in a corumb or a panicle. Other the family Asteraceae is characterized by a highly specialized head technically called a calathid. The family Poaceae has a peculiar inflorescence of small spikes organized in panicles or spikes that are usually simply and improperly referred to as spike and panicle. The genus Ficus has an inflorescence called Cyconium and the genus Euphorbia has Cyathea, usually organized in umbels. For detailed descriptions, see the respective articles. Dot 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 dot. 
Bibliography. Foco Web Erling. Morphology der Blüten und der Blütenstand. Sfeiter Teil. Verlag Jusen Alma, Stuttgart 1981. Wilhelm Troll, Die Inflorescis in so Erste Bahn. Gustav Fischer Verlag, Stuttgart 1964. Wilhelm Troll, Die Inflorescis in so Sfeiter Bahn. Erste Teil. Gustav Fischer Verlag, Stuttgart 1969, Wilhelm Troll, Praktischer ein Verrang in die Pflanzen Morphologie, Gustav Fischer Verlag, Jena 1957, Bernhard Kausmann, Pflanzen Anatomy, Gustav Fischer Verlag, Jena 1963, Walter S. Judd, Christopher S. Campbell, Elizabeth A. Kellogg, Peter F. Stevens, Michael J. Donahue, Plant Systematics, A Phylogenetic Approach, Sinar Associates Inc., 2007, Stevens, P.F., Angiosperm Phylogeny Website, Version 7, May 2006. Strasburger, Noll, Schenk, Schimper, Lehrbuch der Botanik für Hochschulen. 4. Offlage, Gustav Fischer, Jena 1900, p. 459. R. J. Ferry, Inflorescences in the Names, The Macallan International Orchid Society Journal, Volume 12, pp. 